好，誒、嗯、今日咧係回應一下咧，就係啊喺週末嗰度咧，就係、是、聽到就係鄭若華同埋葉劉淑儀咧講咗關於誒、啊、國安法嘅一啲誒好重要嘅原則同埋細節。咁首先咧就係、是、講陪審團制度呢一樣嘢。咁誒即係葉劉淑儀議員咧就。改變以前嗰個嘅講法，就話而家呢啲咁樣嘅國安法底下嘅罪行咧，係唔需要或者唔應該由呢一個陪審團嘅、呃呃、制度去審議嘅。咁我想講翻，其實香港個法律嗰個嘅背景其實好清楚嘅，就係、是、咧根據呢、這、一個、呃、香港法例第二百二十七章，即係話呢一個、呃、裁判處嘅條例底下咧。所有列明就係所有呢、這、一個誒、嗯、嚴重嘅罪行咧，尤其是係誒喺呢個附表二第三部分裏邊嘅罪行咧，全部都要係有陪審員嘅誒呢一個嘅參與去審審判嘅。咁呢一個罪行係包括咩咧？就係、是、所有嗰啲係會被終身監禁嘅罪行，同埋喺而家呢一個。香港法例第二百章裏面，第一部分同第二部分，即係話呢一個誒叛、呃、逆罪啊，或者嗰啲煽惑叛變啊，誒煽惑誒誒誒叛變啊，煽惑嘅誒、呃、意圖啊等等嘅罪行咧，全部都係需要有陪審團去審議嘅誒嘅案件嚟嘅，亦都係要交去呢一個高等法院審議嘅。咁所以話。葉劉淑儀呢啲出嚟講咧，就係話講到國安法裏面嘅罪行係點咁重要，點咁罪大惡極，話包括咩誒呢一個恐怖主義啊，呢、這、一個、啊啊、分離國分裂國家啊等等嘅罪行咧。如果呢啲罪行係咁嚴重嘅，根據而家香港嘅法例咧，所有呢啲咁樣嘅罪行都係必須要交由高等法院去處理，同埋咧係有陪審團去審議嘅。呢、這個第一。第二點就係、是，如果你睇翻就係呢一個誒、嗯、律政司處嘅檢控守則裏邊嘅第八點四段咧，亦都係講到就係當一個檢控官佢去決定將一個案件喺邊一個法庭審議咧，一定要睇第一嗰、那個案件嘅嚴重性啦。第二就係嗰個案件如果個犯罪行為係會啊、呃、有受到七年或以上。嘅刑罰或者係甚至終身監禁嘅話咧，呢、這個一定要係將案件咧送到去高等法院嗰度審理。而頭先我都講咗，高等法院嘅誒案件一定嘅刑事案件咧，一定係有呢一個陪審員係去審議嘅。咁所以話就係呢啲咁樣嘅咁基本嘅法律原則同埋呢一個行之誒、呃、已久嘅呢一個檢控。人員嘅守則咧，其實寫得好清楚。即係簡單講句就係、是，如果你講到國安法裏面嗰啲罪行係咁嚴重嘅，你就應該跟翻而家一貫嘅做法，就係所有嚴重嘅案件嘅罪行嘅案件咧，都係要去高等法院嗰度審議，而必須係有陪審團嘅。呢個係香港好多年嚟行咗好耐嘅一啲好基本嘅法治原則，亦都喺國際法上面咧。係有一個好清楚嘅根據，就係點解嚴重嘅案件一般嚟講都係要有呢一個陪審團嘅制度。I recap a few、uh, words in English. The jury is the most commonly used in criminal trials for serious offences. All criminal trials in the court of first instance must be held with a jury, and that is a basic principle of our current legal system. The most serious offences are tried, of course, in the court of first instance in Hong Kong and not in any inferior court. These offences that must be tried in the court of first instance are listed in Part Three of the Second Schedule to the Magistrate's Ordinance, and they include offences that carry a maximum of life imprisonment, and they include offences such as、uh, those listed in Part One and Part Two of the Crimes Ordinance, including uh, uh, subversion. Uh, including、uh, acts of sedition, so these are very serious offences that are required to be tried by jury in the court of first instance. The usual characteristics of an offence which are triable by jury are that it is an offence of the most serious kind, which is prescribed by statute to be heard in the court of first instance,、uh, or that the likely sentence upon conviction exceeds seven years imprisonment. That is to say, exceeding the district court jurisdiction. 
of seven years of maximum imprisonment. And it is also in the public interest to try these cases in front of a jury. So um, that is point number one. That is the basic legal principle that cuts through our entire legal system. Secondly, if you look at the prosecution's code of the Department of Justice, paragraph 8.4, when a prosecutor decides which court to prosecute a crime, he or she must have regard to the nature and the seriousness of the offence. The more serious the offence, the higher the court you go to. So, for example, for offence that is triable by jury, usually it, we're talking about an offence that has more than seven years of imprisonment and also uh, an offence that perhaps is uh, the maximum sentence is uh, life imprisonment. So for these kind of offences, we are already looking at, uh, for example, as I said, part one and part two of the crimes ordinance include uh, what I've said before regarding serious offences against the Crown or against the government. Those are triable by jury and that is required by law. Now, so the logic goes that if they say that the national security law is there to punish the most serious criminals in the Hong Kong SAR who are plotting to overthrow uh, the government by force or using acts of terror, for example. These are serious offences. Of course, they should be tried by the court of first instance with the jury. And that is the basic legal principle that cuts through our entire legal system. So I wish those who understand how our legal system works would not distort these basic principles of fundamental rights. Now, the second point I want to address is that the Secretary for Justice keeps saying that, oh, there won't be retrospective effect of uh, this national security law, but there may be exceptions. Now, what is what she meant by exceptions? I mean, is she trying to drive fear and terror through the entire Hong Kong legal uh, community and the Hong, uh, society as a, as a whole? Because retrospective effect of a criminal offence is an absolute no under existing basic legal principle governing human rights, under the ICCPR and under the Bill of Rights. It's very clear. You cannot have retrospective criminal offences, not even in the case of emergency. Now, so what kind of exceptions is she talking about under so-called international law? Is she talking about genocide? Is she talking about crime against humanities that under some international law that is recognized, uh, recognized you know, it's not an exception, but it's a recognized category of cases that may have retrospective effect under limited circumstances. Is she talking about genocide or war crimes? Or if she's not talking about those so-called exceptions, what is she referring to? She has to be absolutely clear because a lot of people will be wondering, oh, well, I've been to a protest. I've been to a peaceful assembly um, in the past. I've been to, you know, um, discussion, talking about certain topics that may be considered as sensitive. I may have posted things on my Facebook page criticizing the government or saying things that would be seen as very radical by some elements in society. So am I to be afraid? Do I have to leave Hong Kong if this law will have retrospective effect? So, 簡單說就是律政司司長承認就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否就是否
So on what basis could she be so sure about her stance? On what basis could she assure the Hong Kong people that the basic human rights of the Hong Kong people and our legal system will not be compromised? So if she doesn't even know the contents of the draft law, shouldn't she wait until she's seen the contents of the draft law and before she gives these so-called assurance to the Hong Kong people, which is nothing, empty assurances, because she doesn't know anything about the law. Can you speak up? I, I didn't catch the first part. Now, we've talked about the uh, jury system in the uh, um, uh, previous meetings of the AJLS panel. You know, I've looked at the papers last night. We have talked about how to reform it, to make it better, to make the jury system more uh, representative. You know, there are ways of doing so. But right now, the jury system in Hong Kong works and uh, there are ways to improve it, to expand it. And we have discussed these measures before. We've made recommendations. The uh, Law Reform Commission has actually issued a report um, back in back in 2008, um, there was a report by the Law Reform Commission that talks about how to improve the jury system. I would ask the government to go back to that uh, Law Reform Commission report just to look at the recommendations they have made in that report. And they have made a total of uh, many recommendations, more than 10, on how to improve the jury system. So if anyone wants to understand more about the jury appointment system in Hong Kong and how to improve it, how to make it more representative, you know, representative of the general population, you know, it's all there. The work has been done. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yes, correct. Yeah. So I would just refer you to the report of the Law Reform Commission. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you.